Hi, how's it going? I'm Marlena. Thanks for wandering by. Okay, I'm so excited for this video that I'm making right now. Um, this is not a review of Unlocking the Tarot, Create Your Own Keys by Lisa Pepez. No, it's not a review of this book. I just received Lisa's book. Oh my gosh, I pre-ordered it, but for like because I did it on Amazon, it came much later. Um, so anyway, I just got it. And I um, I haven't read, like I've read a little bit. <laughs> I haven't read all of it yet. What this is, um, is a, it's a tag called Unlock Your Decks. And I'm going to explain it all to you. It's a, basically it's a tag that is inspired by and meant to celebrate um one of the, you know, the exercises, the methods of unlocking, um, unlocking the tarot and like creating your own language for how you read the tarot, which is something along my tarot journey that I really, really learned um, from Miss Lisa Pepez who is also a lovely friend of mine. And I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to do an exercise inspired by Lisa. I mean, Lisa is a friend, but she's like really one of my tarot teachers. And I'm a Lisa stan, so I'm a big fan of Lisa as well. So I'm going to get into exactly what the tag is. But um, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, let you know if you happen not to know um, Lisa Pepez, you, you've got to right um and her book just released so it's available for purchase where you can get books and also i want to give a shout out to um peggy pepez because um either i'm either gonna be putting this up on the day of the sassy dragons tarot launch or it'll come up during the kickstarter campaign so Peggy Pepez, Lisa's wife, um, along with Lisa, and the artwork from the guys from Little Dark Arts, um, the artwork is all by them, have a, de a new deck coming out. It's the launches today, it will be, I think either right today or it'll this video comes out like during the campaign called Sassy Dragons. It's a really like, uh, well, I'll put a picture of Sassy Dragons. There's two different versions, a classic version and a not safe for work version, which I'm leaning towards the not safe for work, but I feel like I need to have the other one as well. Anyway, it's a, you know, it's a Rider Waite Smith inspired, very closely tied to the Rider Waite Smith, all sassified with dragons, and you really hear Peggy's voice come through. So yeah, I mean, that's happening. So, you know, I'll leave a link to the Kickstarter um, about that uh, deck as well, those that deck or two different versions of that deck as well. And so go check that out. I, Lisa and Peggy are just two of my favorite people, you know, in the world they're amazing so yeah so go check out peggy's deck and let's also get inspired by by lisa and hashtag unlock your decks okay so hashtag unlock your decks this is the exercise homework i don't know activity <laughs> i'm a teacher i can't help myself i just like assign things to you out there to do but if you want to participate in this you can make a vr um or you can just do this on your own you can post anywhere you like in tarot land but i am um, what i'm what i'm attempting to do here is well let me explain to you why i'm holding this deck in my hand so this is the druid craft tarot and you can see i've written on it so um, Lisa has a free series called um, Tarot with Training Wheels on her channel. And then she has a couple paid for courses. One of them is um, like the next level of after Tarot with Training Wheels of like unlocking your unlocking your <laughs> unlocking the tarot and creating your own keys just like the book they're like it all kind of works together and you know with uh like lisa's you know philosophy and ideas around the tarot and the way that she reads and teaches tarot so anyway 
The free series that exists on her channel is called Tarot with Training Wheels. And years ago, I, you know, I did it and I got the Druid Craft. It's exactly the deck that Lisa used as well. And I, I used a lot of Lisa's keywords that she used, but I also, you know, created my own. So basically I wrote keywords onto the Druid Craft Tarot and I've kept this one because, and I've kept it with the keywords on it. I have a trimmed version, which actually happened to come to me from Don Michelle. So like I have a Lisa Druid Craft and I have a Don Druid Craft. It's like, oh, like so connected. But in any case, I kept this. And what I wanna do with the Unlock Your Decks is I want to look at more decks that have keywords and cross compare and then see if there's something that I uh, want to add or if there is a one word that I want to make as my own key. So like I know that that's a big like a big part of what Lisa is is kind of getting across in her book is that keywords unlock the the meaning of the tarot and you can layer and layer and layer but for those of you that are first starting because this is what worked for me when I was first starting to read tarot like literally this method plus I love words and keywords and building words and word bubbles and things like that so essentially what we're doing today for hashtag unlock your decks is I'm going to be going through different decks that have keywords and looking at all the same cards. So we'll pick a major, we'll pick a minor card, and we'll pick a court card. So I'll do that for each and then we'll we'll look at and you can shuffle and draw, you can intentionally pick a card either way that you'd like to do it. So we'll go through and let me show you the decks that I'm using. So one is going to be the Druid Craft. Um, and then another deck, if this is an, um, this is an out of print deck. So you might, you might not have a lot of decks that have keywords on them already and that's okay. I think you can still do this exercise by just, you know, comparing different, uh, cards, different cards from different decks and see if like different keywords pop up for you or you can just use one and and however you want to do it like you might not be like me that has a ton of decks with keywords because I'm just I kind of really love decks with keywords that's my thing and I only brought out five and I have m many more um, that have keywords on them. So anyway, let me show you the decks that we're using first. And maybe I'm, I'll explain this a little bit better as we get to the exercise itself. So this is the Crow's Magic Tarot. And this is, this is unfortunately out of print, but this deck is so cool. It has a couple or several different keywords on the cards. And these are really unpredictable kind of strange, different keywords. I think these keywords are a little bit out of the ordinary. I think that's why I like them. Um, you know, you can use, oh, you could also use the Thoth. I didn't grab a copy of my of the Thoth, but um, you could use the, the Thoth titles there. Oh, I'm upside down. I'm always all, all twisted around and upside down. I don't mean to shuffle in reversals. It just happens. Anyway, so I think what we're going to do is um, we're going to, you know, take one major, one minor, and one court card, one at a time, and we're going to look at the different keywords and cross compare. And just, I'm gonna just make mental notes. Like you can, you can take notes in your journal. You can, um, you can, you know, write keywords onto your decks. You can find decks that you have that have keywords. You can, um, you know, write them down on paper. However, you want to like kind of do your own like version of this to unlock your decks. You might just want to look at my video here and cross compare the keywords that I've used and just think about those particular cards that happen to come up in this video. You can do that as well. I just think that like an exercise like this where you're like opening up the keywords. You can use Lisa's book, duh. You can use the Unlocking the Tarot. I guess we'll, we'll do that too. We'll look at the keywords um, for, that came from Lisa as well, which I think a lot of them we'll see on my Druid Craft because I used a lot of the words, uh, the keywords that Lisa kind of does. Anyway, this is the Tarot of Light and this is Mass Market. 
And uh, this is a trimmed version. So th this has keywords too, which I really like. This deck almost reads like an oracle because the artwork is so soft and so different. And But the keywords really do feel kind of RWS. Sometimes they go their own way, um, like the Empress's mother. So that's definitely, a, you know, that's, that's kind of more like a title too. So like you can... You know, you'll see, we can see kind of differences between titles, between keywords. And I just, I don't know, I like the idea of, of looking into and bit word building from our decks. Another deck that I grabbed to do this with is the Vision Quest Tarot. Now this is a tarot I haven't used very often. I know it's a, it's actually a Thoth inspired, um, so Vision Quest Tarot, and it's, I believe Thoth inspired and it's got like a sort of indigenous or Native American um, vibe to it. But I really love, oh my gosh, and of course things are all upside down. So I guess the, I guess the majors don't have, don't have um, a key word. I think maybe it's just the minors. Oh, and not the, and the courts are renamed. So maybe we won't be able to use this one. Yeah. Maybe we won't be able to use this. Well, some of them are renamed. Yeah, I think they're just titles. Oh, it's just the minors then. So just like the Thoth, the titles are like integration here. Oh, okay, interference, that's the same as the Thoth. Okay, so maybe we won't use this one. I thought this one had, see, I haven't loved, that's definitely Thothy. Okay, God, this deck is so cool. Well, maybe we'll pull it out when we do the minors. So I'll use this one when we do the minors, but not the majors um, and not the chords. Okay, and then another deck that I know has keywords and a deck that I've worked with quite a bit. This is an indie deck, and it is the Tree Spirit Tarot. This has, and it's all upside down, of course. This one I know for sure has a keyword for every single card. I love the oranges so much. I mean, you guys know I'm from Florida. So, oh my gosh. So this one definitely has the keywords on every single card. So, yeah, the tree spirit. And then we'll break out, you know, we'll look in Lisa's book as well. And we'll, we'll just, you know, word map. We'll just definitely have all kinds of words. Um, and you can, I, re I recommend that you use your journal. I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to have like all the words here on, on the table in front of you. Okay. All right. So if I didn't make sense already, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to unlock our decks and you can do this too. If you'd like, if you have decks that have keywords, or even if you don't, if you just want to come up with an assigned keywords, if you want, if you have Lisa's book and you want to use she gives a couple different uh, options for keywords as well. Um, and if, yeah, if you want to, if you want to do a VR, if you want to do like an offshoot of this, a different exercise, something along these lines to unlock your decks by, you know, we're going to have some of our keys here. So we're going to start with a major card. Now I'm going to shuffle and pull one off camera and then I'll get everybody here in front of you. So yeah. That's what we're gonna start with, with a major. Okay, so I pulled a major card and then I found that same one in all of these decks. And we're gonna start with, so we, we're gonna start with the chariot. And in the, the word that I wrote on the, I'm blanking, the druid craft, sorry, the druid craft tarot, I wrote drive. And I can't remember whether or not that was Lisa's word or not for it. Let me look in, in unlocking the tarot. I don't, I'm going to resist the urge to read the entire section dedicated to the, um, to the chariot. Uh, but I'm just going to look at her keywords. And I know many of you have probably already seen quite a bit of, um, you know, reviews and like kind of overview and first impressions of, of unlocking the tarot. Um, so, <clears throat> ah, so no, the chariot. So Lisa's personal keyword for the chariot is determination. Drive, yeah, I think that those are like, you know, sister words, brother words. They're in that, they're in the same family. Let me see what other words she gives us before we, 
Um, oh yeah, willpower is another word that Lisa has in her book, willpower, focus, movement. Um, I did quite a lot of work with um, with the chariot when I did the deck and walk, and um, it was one of the it was one of the the major cards and one of the zodiac signs that I did a little bit more of a deep dive, and so I um, I definitely think um, I wonder if this is the keyword that still sticks with me because I think of the chariot as like your like vehicle, the vehicle of your persona and personality that I guess it drives you, yeah, that 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 moves you through um, life, right? So that is, that word still does resonate for me. Um, that's really interesting. So I guess m this exercise of mine is kind of like a walk down memory lane and like maybe even seeing how my my reading and interpretation of the tarot has changed because it's been a while since I did Lisa's um, tarot with training wheels a while ago. All right, so now let's reveal what our, the other cards have. So unlocking these. So the chariot from Crow's Magic is entity and channel. Oh, I feel like that fits more my vibe, like the channel one, maybe entity. That's a really strange keyword for the chariot, but it makes a little bit of sense. Um, I also, you know, I'm very aware of the zodiac sign that is connected to the chariot, which is the sign of cancer. Um, so we've got that crab energy. So that entity kind of creature kind of thing is what that made me think of. And a channel, like, yeah, I feel like that, like that, I really do think of the chariot and the charioteer um, as like, they're they they co you know they coexist and they're like that part of ourselves that helps us move through life it's kind of like but it's like early stages of us you know like our our like developmental like personality you know i don't know that i think it's innate or that it never changes anyway like the channel and the drive but there this is you know more like that that momentum that like feeling of movement you know that's what that's definitely tied to the chariot um so cool so we've got drive entity channel determination focus movement all of these words i can um I should probably like write this down on paper, but we have, you know, I'm just saying them. Maybe I'll have them pop up on the screen. Drive, entity, channel, focus, determination, movement, okay? Um, and then I did grab the, the one from the vision quest. This is more of a, like the archetype thing, a different name for the chariot, but I thought it would be interesting to bring it in as well as another like kind of title here. So spiritual warrior, that's interesting too, right? So that's a whole other take on it. And I would really need to sit with this and think about it, probably look at the little white book. Um, if, the, if not, I think there's a bigger book that I don't have that works with this deck, but I just thought it'd be interesting to toss that one out there. Here's the one from Tarot of Light. So in the Tarot of Light, the chariot is renamed The Path, which I really like that idea too. So we go from it being a, like you can, there's all these different aspects of the chariot, the chariot itself, the vehicle, the chariots here, or the movement. And this is actually like speaking towards like the direction and like the path that you're on in that vehicle. And exploration is the word. I don't know that that's one that I would like, like assign as like my particular my particular keyword for the chariot. I really think that like channel and channel is like feeling more like a drive feels like it too. But you know me, I, I probably never set on any one particular keyword. I'm just like a, a lot of different words going around. Okay, and then um, an exploration. Yeah, I feel like that speaks to, sorry about my nails. Um, I feel like exploration speaks to like the way that our like personality, our paths, our choices, our focus changes throughout the course of our lives. So that's interesting. Okay, and then finally we have from the tree spirit tarot, we have the chariot is the an ash tree. And now I confess, I don't really know 
I don't really know why that would be chosen. I'd have to like look into the guidebook for that, but life force, life force. So even more of like a, you know, we've got like nouns, we've got, um, we've got, uh, ideas, more conceptual things. We've got, uh, well, no, these are all nouns. Well, exploration. I mean, I guess you can, you can move these into like, um, into, um, verbs if you want to, right? Explore, but life force, that's really interesting too. Cause that makes me think of like this, um, you know, the chariot and the charioteer as like the, this feels very thoughty to me because of the orb that the charioteer is holding um, in the Thoth tarot. That's kind of like that um, holy grail kind of thing, that that ultimate um, like thing, like meaning in life that you're searching for, which is one of the things I, I think about and I've talked about when I've, you know, thought about the chariot. It's big, big energy. Like there's a lot in the chariot. And I feel like this is one of those major cards where it's um, harder to distill into like one key word. I think this one in particular can go so many different ways with so many different symbols. And it's one of those cards that I feel like gets depicted, you know, in various different ways. You know, the vehicle though, the vehicle though is typically um, something that you see, you know, like, well, I mean, I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. I'm looking at these cards. This has the, you know, the chariot itself, right? Um, and then interesting. Okay. That's so interesting. I feel like I'm all off center and it probably drives you guys crazy or some of you guys crazy. Okay. Wow. So cool. So let's, let me, let me say all the word, the keywords again, because that's the idea here. And that's what like I'm encouraging you to do on your own or to do a VR or however you want to do it. So drive entity, channel, spiritual warrior, exploration, life force, and then the ones that Lisa had, determination um, in, in unlocking the tarot. She had um, determination and focus and movement. Um, really cool. Okay, so that's a major card. Let's do a, let's do a minor card next. We'll do a minor card. Okay, for our next part of the exercise, our next exploration, I picked a minor card and I intentionally picked my birth decking card, which is the Eight of Swords. So I'm a Gemini and am, I'm in the first decan of, the, of Gemini. So the Eight of Swords is my birth decan card. If you don't know what I mean by that, I'll link to uh, a video below that explains decans and birth decan cards. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the Druid craft. So the Eight of Swords and the word is overwhelm. I'm almost 100% sure that that is Lisa's word and, and that I didn't write my own or I agreed with hers at that time and used it. Let's look in Unlocking the Tarot and see the words that Lisa has for the Eight of Swords. And I'm so curious if this is a word, as I talk through this, if this is a word that I still think would be like my main keyword for the Eight of Swords. Yes, it's overwhelm. So her personal keyword, I love the word overwhelm for the Eight of Swords. And that this is the, you know, the section on the Eight of Swords. So cool. So other words from Lisa are restriction and trap. Interesting, cool. So I definitely still look at the Eight of Swords and think of it as a, I, I have a blend of it from both the um, Rider Waite Smith and the Thoth um, version of the Eight of Swords because the title um, for the Eight of Swords in the Thoth is Interference. And I'm pretty sure, I'll, I'll flip this one over to let you know because this is the Vision Quest, which is 
um, a thought inspired. And essentially, there's a lot of the the keywords in the vision quest that are the same as thought. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So here we have, and I love that there's a bird here. Um, and it's been renamed to the suit of air. So swords is air. So the aid of air interference. And I really do think, I mean, like, honestly, I think all kinds of things because I'm an eight of swords -y type person. <laughs> and I think, think, and think, and think myself into overwhelm. And um, I think of like radio waves. That's one of the things that I think of um, just like, like kind of old school, like static and, um, you know, like if the TV back in the day, if the cable were to go out and it was just like static and that, that, that kind of sound, that's what I feel like happens mentally for the, an eight of swords type moment or type time where there's just, it's just too much swirling around in the brain that you can't like put the ideas together, um, that there, or there's something that's like, that's interfering, <laughs> duh. It's that sound, that like external sound that's like interfering with your ability to like think clearly. So I think that it's the overwhelm, maybe I don't think that anymore because maybe that feels more like it's like you're causing it, whereas interference feels like it's external. But it can be both. Like I feel like you can be causing your own Eight of Swords moment or there's something outside of you that's causing your Eight of Swords kind of moment um but yeah like I think I live in like a perpetual state of just like so many um ideas and not enough time to like verbalize them or bring them manifest them or you know bring them even out <laughs> into the world or even like make sense of them behind my own eyelids um yeah, so let's look at the other one. So in Crow's Magic Tarot, uh, we have trapped and confined. So that feels very aligned here with like the physical state that the the um that the person shows up to be in 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 a Rider Waite Smith deck. But you know, you can I guess you can go different places with this. Like trapped, confined is the mind trapped and confined is the body trapped and confined because of the mind you know is it a metaphor um or is it like a real kind of state of being you know um you can take it so many different ways so we have overwhelm we have interference we have trapped confined and now in the tarot of light the okay so the suit of swords is changed to angels in this deck so the eight of angels we have confusion i mean it's okay. Like, that's an okay word in my mind. Like, I think I don't mind it as part of, like, the word soup. You know, the word bubble that we're, you know, floating about or the word soup that we're mixing all this stuff into. But it's not a word that I would readily use for the Eight of Swords. I feel like it's a, like, it's a, um... It's not the Eight of Swords, it's a product of the Eight of Swords. That's what I feel like about the word confusion. So like, it's confusion, it seems more tied to like Seven of Cups maybe, or like in like indecision type cards. It feels like it might be one of the products of the Eight of Swords, but it's not equal to the word overwhelm or interference, which interference feels much more like the word that I feel connected to. Um, and then we have the the tree, the tree spirit tarot. So in this deck, the um all of the suits are renamed to different types of trees. So it's the eight of hardwoods is swords and the elm tree, which I confess again, I'm not sure why the elm would be connected to this card. I'd have to read about the, that tree more. Um, and isolation. Oh, that's really interesting. That's a very different word than I, I feel like that's an outlier type of a word. And I, I probably should look more into the guidebook for that. I won't do that here today. Um, but like, I would, I'm curious, you know, but it does, 
It does feel like it maybe lives in like down the street from these other Eight of Swords words, but it might not be like in the same house, <laughs> if that makes any sense to you. It's like a neighbor, but it's somewhere where I would get like way further um, down the road if uh, for isolation. Interesting though. I mean, I feel like maybe that's like an offshoot, just like confusion is. Like I think it's like a, a way that you can feel feel when you're having when you're in an eight of swords type space you can feel isolated you can feel confusion you can um but I feel like it's an experience the experience is more like these the experience is overwhelm the experience is interference I feel like that's what the eight of swords like equals for me and wait, now I can't remember Lisa's words again so hang on I'll put them up on the screen again for you if I can Remember to be fancy and do things like that when, when I'm editing. So again, oh, restriction and trapped. Okay, okay. So like trapped, confined. Yeah, restriction and trapped. So those are those are like, yeah, that that the reason why I feel like I don't like the word trapped or confined um, or, res well, restriction maybe is a little bit looser. The re reason why I feel like I wouldn't use these words is because that feels like more bodily. That feels like body. That feels like from, like that feels visceral. Like that's a, that's like a, you know, just it feels like a bodily thing, a material thing. Whereas like when we're in the swords, like, man, I really want to feel like it's, it, it feels, it's, it, I reflect it in my, in the mind and the intellect, you know, I will, I do go sometimes and think about the swords in terms of like communication and also as a weapon. Um, and I know a lot of people re can read the swords that way too. So I can do that, but most of the time I'm like, it's air. This is air, this is the mind, um, this is the mind space. So that's why like thinking of it bodily is not, doesn't really doesn't really work for me as much. Okay, that was cool. I hope you, I hope you liked this one. We're gonna do one more. And yeah, I mean like I'm just, I encourage you to, you know, write this down, to think of what different ways that you might want to try this exercise out with Lisa's book, with your decks, in response to me. Do it the same way. Do it your own way. Whatever. Um, or don't do it at all. <laughs> whatever you want. I'm not the boss of you. Anyway, okay. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to clean this up and then we're going to grab a court card, which is going to be, I think, a little bit, a little bit more tricky, trickier. Okay. Okay. Okay, and lastly, we're gonna take a look at a court card. So I grabbed even from the Vision Quest Tarot, which is not like technically a keyword, but it's fun for exploration. Okay, so I grabbed a court card that it makes me think of Lisa, and it also makes me think of myself because it's the Page of Cups, or in the Druid Craft, it's the Princess of Cups, okay? And the Page of Cups is, so both Lisa and I, if you do the Myers-Briggs personality test, then you um, you can get your, uh, um, whatchamacallit, your, a court card from there because there's 16 personalities, 16 court cards. And I'm an INFP and so is Lisa. <laughs> and so that, um, in some, I mean, some folks, I'm not sure that everybody agrees that uh, on the same court cards and the same personality type, but that's the one. And also I think, I'm not sure if it's just because of Meyer Bri Myers Briggs, but I think Lisa also has, it's been her significator for a while. And for me, it's less of a significator than like, than some other cards. Like I lean into the, the lover's card as a Gemini and I lean into the eight of swords card as my Deccan card. Um, I struggle with the, with the court cards too, you know, cause I read them differently, like literally all the time. So like sometimes I read them as like aspects of self, so, um, you know, aspects of my own self personality. Sometimes I read them as like, like, areas in a progression um like from you know the page to the king like where you are in that particular suit as like a, like mastery over that particular realm of like the mind or the heart or whatever um sometimes i read them as like p literal people like people in my life um people that i know um or like a sometimes i read them as like that like an energy of of like a, a personality type like 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 an archetype again right you know more like a 
a, like a feeling around that type of person or a way of being. Um, so it changes. And so I, so because I'm, I can't ever, I have like never, I really struggle to like identify myself as any one thing. Um, I, my significator type things changes. Anyway, anyway, all that to say <laughs> that we're looking at keywords of the princess of cups or the page of cups. And the word I have here is idealistic. Now, I don't know. I, I feel like maybe this was the word that Lisa did in the tarot with training nails. I can't remember. I can't remember. Oops, I'm dropping things. Okay. Oh my gosh, I dropped Lisa's book. Okay. Unlocking the tarot. We're going to look in here and find. Um, I said it like that again because I just dropped it and I'm like, Oh, unlocking the tarot. Okay, sorry, I'm being weird today, you guys. Can't help it. So I know that Lisa in this book has the court cards separate, and I actually really love that because I think of the court cards as separate from the numbered minor cards and as separate, you know, from the majors as well. They're their own thing. They really are their own thing. So in the so here in the page of cups, Lisa has um Oh, oh, that's right. She has, I forgot about this. She has this whole sliding scale when it comes to her keywords for the court. Oh, that's right. She writes a really, really cool way to look at the court cards. You guys, if you don't have this book, you need to get this book. And like, I just, I know that this methodology, like I know this like theory or philosophy and way of reading the, the, um, the court cards because I know Lisa so I know but like I love that you know the way that she's written and I'm really excited to read more in depth and like take notes and highlight but so the page of cups she has on a sliding scale between sensitive and fragile and I like that too because I now you know when I'm learning more about the court cards in terms of um the the astrology like in the Deccan walk um and how I've been learning about them um, is like they're where they land on the wheel um, and they cross they cross different um, different uh, zodiac signs so they can have like a light side and a dark side uh, the, the pages are a different story and and if you want you, you can watch my deck and exploration videos for more on that but like yeah this just gets me so excited and talking about tarot like just so excited and uh anyway so yeah so f sensitive to fragile i like that because there's like um and i'm sure you know lisa goes into like a really good explanation of that sliding scale so you can go from one you know from here to there really easily you know just being sensitive to being like oh, you know overly fragile and those have all different kinds of positive and negative connotations aligned with it so idealistic I can't remember if that was an original word for her back in the tarot with training wheels or not but that was the word that I kind of landed on and I still kind of feel that like because I think um, naive might be like a, like a, like a, a step too far. Um, and idealistic is like kind of just, it kind of brings in that like naivete, but like that hopeful, um, dreamy, um, but not too dreamy. Cause this is, this is really in the realm of, of, of the emotions. Right. Um, and like that first kind of precipice of like learning about yourself in relationship to others that's that's where i feel like the page of cups the, the princess of cups you know sits they're just like exploring interpersonal relationships what that feels like you know they're 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 figuring out their feelings they're they're feeling their feelings <laughs> okay let's look at well let's look at another one that's really lovely because the tarot of light does feel that way Okay, so page, so in in this deck, it's um, the cups are hearts, right? And so the page of hearts is innocence. That's so yeah, I feel like that's that that's in the world of idealistic. That's in the world of sensitive and fragile. Um, but I think this is like I think it's maybe like a step too far, like that naive naivete, that night naive, you know, naive versus like naivete. Um, innocence, yeah, I can see that. It's a word that I would, that I, it feels like it lives in this page of cups, like, you know, word soup. 
Um, it's an ingredient. It's it's a it, yeah. It, it goes in the mix. I don't know if it's a product. Um, we're actually, I kind of do feel like that about how, like the words that let that Lisa used, that like sensitive, sensitive to fragile. I feel like those, um, I get it. I like it as a sliding scale, but it does feel like it's a, um, it's a product of a page of cups space, you know, maybe being, um, sense. Well, no, I don't know. I got to think more about those words. I like them though. I'll have to read her whole thing to really kind of get my brain wrapped around it. I still feel like idealistic is the word that I kind of dig the most here. All right, let's see Crow's Magic because this one's going to be weird, I'm sure. Oh yeah, it definitely is weird. <laughs> um, it's so Page of Cups and we've got this uh, lizard. <laughs> this is one of my favorite cards though, the lizard like up in your face. A lizard feels interesting for the Page of Cups because it feels like such an earthy animal. Um, not watery very much at all. Lizards are like abundant where I live, like abundant. And I am often like, just, I don't, I like to like see them and see them doing their lizard thing and live in their lizard life, but like not in my house. <laughs> they, when they're in the house, it just feels like chaos because the dog and they just like, run everywhere and I'm like literally getting goosebumps thinking like look at my arm can you see the goosebumps thinking of a lizard coming into my space they scare me I don't know why but like I do want them to live their happy little lizard life so I actually kind of in like having watched lots of lizard behavior they do feel like these like really and this guy does seem they do feel like these really kind of like idealistic little guys who just like run around doing their lizard thing. They're just like, they, they're hoping for the best out there. I really do. They don't seem, they're not like mean or I don't know, I'm assigning, you know, personifying them, but they just really do feel like they're just like, you know, they're just, they're, they're doing their thing. And they, I think they're hoping for the best. <laughs> That's what I think about lizards. So let's look at the words, unearthly and mystical. That's really interesting and not two words that I would have ever put together for the page of cups maybe a little bit mystical but that feels a little bit more I don't know that feels like further along in the court cards like to be a myth to be a mystic a mystic or mystical that feels yeah not very page of cupsy page of cups feels a little bit too new unearthly yeah maybe I can get that behind that a little bit I'd have to think more about how I think about the princess of cups like the Thoth princess of cups versus the pa the Rider Waite Smith page of cups and that might take me more into this realm a little bit more like spiritual and outside of um, yeah, maybe, maybe, but, um, these are weird to me. I'm not sure that I would like, I would, I like it. I like it in terms of a reading. It would be interesting where that landed. Um, and then, okay, I grabbed the vision, um, the vision quest tarot, but it's, um, only, you know, it's a title and a lot of, a lot of decks do this. A lot of decks call the princess, the daughter and the, um, prince or the knight, the, um, the son, um, uh, son and daughter, and then the king and queen or mother, father. So anyway, daughter, I think is a good word, um, for any of the pages. I like daughter. So I, I just put that in there just for, you know, for funsies. Um, so we've got idealistic, unearthly, mystical daughter. And then we had sensitive and fragile sliding scale, sensitive, fragile. And then finally from the tree spirit tarot, we have, okay. So the so the core cards are renamed in this deck as well as the suit. So fruit trees are cups and the messenger is the page, which I think messenger, messenger as a keyword or a title, I think is something that can be seen in both the pages and the knights. I feel like I've seen that kind of thing go both ways there. So messenger for both. And then here we have an avocado tree, which I got to tell you, I'm very familiar with avocado trees. And this looks like a Florida avocado 
if that's even what it's called because I know there's like California avocados are a lot smaller more wrinkled and then these these big green like they're harder they're not super squishy on the outside or this is the type of avocado tree that I had in my backyard that my dad grew from a seed and became a huge avocado tree we, we ate avocado I love avocado love it with little olive oil mm, delicious like I before avocado toast became a thing <laughs> avocados were like a staple part of our diet in my family Anyway, I'm waxing on and on about avocados and not even looking at this word, which many of you might be like, what? And I kind of feel that way too. So fertility for the page of cups, that's really interesting. Again, for the tree spirit tarot, I would have to take a look at how that would work. I feel like trees, <laughs> trees in the water suit are interesting. So those choices are interesting because trees are just, you know, real earthy things to me. Although there are some that really make sense, like the energy around it. But I would have thought of something just a little bit more like youthful in quality. Although I kind of feel that way. I can kind of feel that way about the avocado fruit itself and not necessarily the tree. And like peeling back to discover in that like yellow, the yellow and green of it. I mean, guacamole feels very Page of Cupsy. <laughs> Does that even make sense to you? <laughs> um, I feel like there are people who are like, oh yeah, guacamole equals Page of Cups. <laughs> it, but it does in some ways. Like it just feels like, like, like fun and free spirited and just like ready for love and anything, you know, like, I don't know <laughs> if that makes sense. But fertility feels like way too tied to like queen energy or empress energy. So I don't really feel fertility too much with the page of cups. That's, I mean, I had originally, I remember when I started working with this deck, I thought this was a typo because the Empress here, and I grabbed it to show you, the Empress also has the um, same keyword. And then I looked this up and it's not, and it's not a typo. They meant to have fertility on both these cards, which I just, it's interesting. It's just an interesting choice, not one that I would necessarily choose. So yeah, all right, I think I've rambled and babbled enough for the princess or page of cups. Okay, my friends, that's it. That's the end of this exercise. Hashtag unlock your decks. Inspired by Unlocking the Tarot, Create Your Own Keys by Lisa Pepez. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it made sense as like an activity that you could respond to in a VR or any which way that you would like. Or if you just enjoyed watching me do it, that's cool too. <laughs> um, yeah, so I I would love to see any of you, you know, respond to this in any kind of way or leave me, you know, comments. I'd, I'd like to hear what you think about um you know, this kind of exercise. It was super fun for me to do. I definitely, um, you know, am constantly, consistently inspired by Lisa. She is definitely a tarot teacher of mine along, um, along with being a very dear friend as well. So thank you to Lisa, um, for, you know, everything, just everything. Love you. And also don't forget to, to, to check out um, either today, I think the launch might be happening as uh, this, when this um, video goes up or later in the day after this video goes up or that campaign will be going. So check out the Sassy Dragons Tarot campaign on Kickstarter. I'll leave you link a uh, link in the description box below so you can get there. And thank you so much for sticking with me. And yeah, I hope that you all have a beautiful, wonderful day. Bye.